Hello and welcome to a Nintendo News Network reaction video. Well, the long fabled January Direct hit today and it was a mini direct. And whether you were liked it or not, there was a lot of information. I'll go over how my personal feelings of an overall reaction at the end, but I'm going to go through each individual thing that was announced today and just talk about it. First was The World Ends With You, Final Remix, coming to the Switch. This was a game that I passed up on the DS. I don't quite remember why, because I remember thinking it looked pretty inter interesting. Maybe another game came out around it and it just kept going on the back burner and I just never grabbed it. It coming to the Switch was a big surprise, at least for me. I thought it was more of a cult classic game than a big hit. Eh, I need to look at the numbers. But it's exciting to get a second life with some new content. So, depending on when it comes out, I might pick it up. Hopefully it doesn't go to the back burner again for me. Next is something I didn't even expect ever, but is pretty obvious. DLC for Pokémon Tournament DX, in the form of what's called the Battle Pack. There are two coming out, each including one Pokémon to battle with and two assist Pokémon, or support Pokémon, whatever they're calling them. So the first one is Aegislash, and the second one will be Blastoise. And each slash will come out in the end of January and Blastoise in March. It's a bit pricey, 15 bucks for two two fighters, four to four Pokemon, some new avatar clothes, and some other things. But I think it's good. They're making the game more of a platform than just coming out with new games. And that's kind of what the arcade cabinet was in Japan. So I think they're making the right move here. Next, and a personal favorite of the direct of mine, we get some information about Kirby Star Allies, including a March release date. I cannot be more thrilled. The game keeps looking better. You have more combos with different abilities. You can make ice lances. There's a move literally called Friend Throw. How can you not like it? And you can have a friend train, you know? And they have some new abilities. Artist, which looks pretty cool, and then Spider. So I think... March is going to be pretty awesome with this. Uh, I'm really excited. And I was listening to some other people today, and they made a good point. I can't remember the last time there was a bad Kirby game. Really. So I'm pretty hyped. Next, we got Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, which is all the content from Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U and Hyrule Warriors Legends from the 3DS game into one definitive package. I can't do it, guys. I've played this game twice. I love it to death, but I cannot do Hyrule Warriors again. And that's saying that in the most love possible because I really like this game. And if you've never played it or even just played one version, it's time to double dip. Um, I just don't think it's worth triple dipping. So I think it's a good port for the Switch to give it some more life and some more numbers. I think it did pretty good on the 3DS and did as well as you would expect on the Wii U being the Wii U. The next one is a game no one saw coming, but we may have should have. Mario Tennis Aces, a new tennis game. With the last one on the Wii U, Ultra Smash, being pretty much a DOA game, they just needed to fill a spot in that Christmas that was really dead. Not that it really helped. It's, it, I, I still don't know if I fully trust this one, but in the short, like, 30-second clip, there's more content in, in, shown than in the entire game of Ultra Smash, so that's a plus. They've promised us a story mode, which could be interesting, boss battles. It really seems like they're taking care of this one. So I'm excited, but weary. So I'm going to wait till we learn more, but I'm a cup is half full kind of guy, so... Let's hope for the best. The next one is Yeast Yeas 8. I may be mispronouncing that. And it's a JRPG. It looks kind of interesting. I do like how there's some hand-drawn animation portions. And it looks interesting. It just depends on when it's released. I say that because I know they said summer, but I'm still in the middle of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I love JRPGs, but I do need some rest in between them. They are engrossing, and I'm also the type of person that basically goes after every side quest you can. So, you know, I'm excited for it, but it just depends on the timing. Next is Super Mario Odyssey, free DLC with Luigi's Balloon thing. Um, the keyword being free. 
it looks like a lot of fun. So basically you can choose to hide a balloon in a kingdom or seek out other people's balloons. And I think it could be interesting, especially if you can search for a, your friends on the Switch. So I can go search for one of my friends and be like, hey, I found it. Or for, you know, I am a YouTuber, very little one, but you can be, let's use Game Explain. They're big. You know, oh, we can go find Game Explain's balloons. I know Andre is going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, and maybe you guys will search for mine. That would be fun. Uh, it being free is pretty cool. Seeing Luigi is pretty cool. And so it comes out February. Next is SNK Heroin Tag Team Frenzy. Eh, this is, I'm not the audience for this. It's not my cup of tea. The only fighting game I ever really like is Smash. So if you like this, I think it's for you. I don't know SNK characters. I have no emotional attachment, but I have a feeling this is going to have a good audience though. Next is we get some DLC information from Mario and Rabbids. Uh, specifically, Donkey Kong is going to be the new playable character. And it's there's no gameplay, but we get an idea of how he's going to work. He has the banana he uses as a boomerang, a banana ring, if you will. And I think in the trailer it shows him launching Peach Rabbit up pretty high. So I think his ability to launch uh, your allies is going to be probably the best of all the characters. It'll be fun to play, as I'm sure. I haven't purchased any of the DLC for the game. Not sure I'll pick this one up. Um, I really like the game, but I'm kind of done. But we'll see. Uh, next is Payday 2. Eh. Again, I think it's good that a game like this is on the Switch and it shows the more third-party support is coming, but it's just not my cup of tea. It has a timed exclusive character for the Switch, which is nice at least. So it's not like here's just the port, but here's the port with some add-ons. Next are two games, Fee or Fi, I can't, I'm assuming Fee, and then Celeste. Both look really interesting and caught my attention, especially Fee. It's very artistic and you use the HD rumble with music and to communicate with creatures. And Celeste looks like a Super Meat Boy kind of punishment kind of game. I can get behind both of these. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on for them, maybe pick them up when they're on sale, or in a lull, I'll just pick one up and be, hey, say hey. Or, in the future, maybe I'll be streaming some games and I'm going to pick one up. Next was, they're bringing Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze to the Switch. If you haven't played this game, you need to. It was really overshadowed on the Switch, coming right after Smash Wii U, so just a few months after it, so no one really paid much attention to it. And the fact it was on the Wii U just doesn't help it either. Plus, they've added a new easy mode, quotations, in the form of Funky Kong, which I really do like. Giving easy mode a new character instead of a, you know, color swap Donkey Kong gives a little bit more flavor. and may even make some veteran players like myself give it a try sometimes. It's a punishing game, so having this is pretty good to let people ease into it. Next, and the last one is Dark Souls Remastered. It's coming here, it's coming in May. What's the, what's the emotion above eh? Because I know Dark Souls is a big deal, but it's not something I've ever really gotten into. And maybe that's part of it, I've just never played it. I know of it, I know it's a fun game and it gets a lot of people's love. And I don't think it's not like it doesn't deserve it, I bet it does. Maybe I'll pick it up eventually, but I'm not sure it's something I'll get day one. But I want to stress, I think it's important that it's on the Switch. It continues to prove that third parties are believing in Nintendo again. And that is important to keep the trend going with the Switch's success. I think in this Direct we had a good mix of some third party and some first party. Like I said, I think people got way too hyped. If you follow my Twitter, you would see that I was describing that yesterday. And I know Nintendo themselves weren't really helping with the burning chibi robo and the me and the hot dog costume pictures with no captions. Anyways, overall, I think it was a good Direct. I wasn't expecting huge, huge details when I found out it was a mini. And this is what I, and I went in happy and I left happy. If you weren't happy with this, this is just the tip of the iceberg for 2018. We still don't know much of what's gonna happen after E3. 
I think we're going to get a lot more announcements in the coming months to E3 and then some big ones then. We know Smash will eventually come to the Switch, whether it's a port or a new game. We know Metroid Prime 4 is in development, Bayonetta 3, Pokemon Switch, a new Fire Emblem, and much, much more. So, what did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below or on our Facebook page. If you think we deserve it, please like and subscribe to us on all of the platforms. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, everything. And have a great day.